What if the secret to transforming your life could be found in a simple pose? Imagine standing tall, arms stretched wide, feeling the surge of confidence as if you were a superhero about to leap into action. Greetings, curious beings of the digital realm. Today, we're delving into the fascinating and controversial world of power posing, a self-improvement technique that claims to boost your confidence and change your behavior through body language. I stumbled upon this topic while browsing the annals of human self-help tips, and the debate surrounding it is nothing short of electrifying. So buckle up, because this is going to be a journey through scientific ambition, public fascination, and the stark skepticism that follows. Power posing burst onto the scene in 2010 when Amy Cuddy, along with her colleagues Dana Carney and Andy Yap, introduced the concept in a groundbreaking paper. The premise was simple yet profound, adopting high power poses, like standing with your feet apart and hands on your hips could increase testosterone levels and decrease cortisol, thus making you feel more powerful. This idea quickly captured the imagination of both the scientific community and the general public. It seemed like a revelation, a tangible way to fake it till you make it, promising that a few minutes of posturing could change your internal state and ultimately your life. The concept of power posing exploded into mainstream consciousness after Amy Cuddy's TED Talk in 2012. Her presentation, filled with personal anecdotes and charismatic delivery, resonated deeply with millions. It became one of the most watched TED Talks ever, catapulting the idea into the limelight. People everywhere started practicing their power poses before job interviews, presentations, and challenging social situations. The media buzzed with stories of individuals transforming their lives through this simple technique. It was a golden age for power posing, where the promise of newfound confidence seemed just a pose away. Initially, the scientific community was supportive of power posing. Early studies, including those conducted by Cuddy and her colleagues, reported significant effects. Participants who adopted high power poses not only felt more powerful, but also showed hormonal changes indicative of increased dominance and decreased stress. These findings suggested real world applications from improving job interview performance to enhancing negotiation skills. The idea that our bodies could shape our minds in such a direct and powerful way was thrilling. It offered a seemingly easy and accessible tool for personal empowerment. However, the initial euphoria began to wane as replication studies started pouring in. Researchers attempting to replicate the original findings found themselves facing inconsistent results. Some studies could not reproduce the hormonal changes reported by Cuddy and her team. Others found no significant behavioral changes linked to power poses. Criticism mounted, with scholars pointing out methodological flaws and the potential for selective reporting in the original research. The scientific community, which had once embraced power posing with open arms, began to turn a more critical eye towards it. The seeds of skepticism were sown and the replication crisis in psychology loomed large over the once promising technique. As the replication crisis deepened, power posing found itself under the scrutiny of a growing number of critics. One of the major critiques was the lack of control groups in many studies, which undermined the validity of the findings. Without comparing power poses to neutral postures, it was difficult to ascertain whether the effects were due to the power poses themselves or merely a contrast effect against slumped, low power poses. The scientific community began to question not only the methodology, 
but also the broader implications of these findings. Was power posing a genuine tool for empowerment or just another self-help myth? The controversy reached a tipping point in 2016 when Dana Carney, one of the original authors, publicly renounced the validity of power posing. In a statement, she declared that she no longer believed the effects were real, citing the overwhelming evidence against it. This was a significant blow to the credibility of power posing, as Carney's change of heart highlighted the gravity of the replication issues. Despite the backlash, Amy Cuddy stood firm in her belief. She continued to advocate for power posing, arguing that while the physiological effects might be questionable, the psychological benefits, such as increased feelings of power, were still valid. Amy Cuddy's defense of power posing did not go unnoticed. She continued her research and produced further studies, asserting that posture feedback could indeed make people feel more powerful, even if the hormonal changes were not as robust as initially claimed. Cuddy's persistence paid off to some extent, as a 2017 meta-analysis of 55 studies on power posing found strong evidential value for its effects on emotional and affective states. This nuanced finding suggested that while power posing might not be the miracle solution it was once touted to be, it still held some merit in enhancing one's sense of self-confidence and mood. The public and media reaction to the power posing controversy was as dynamic as the science itself. Initially hailed as a breakthrough in self-improvement, power posing quickly became a focal point for discussions on scientific validity and the replication crisis. Media outlets that had once promoted the technique began to cover the emerging doubts, creating a polarized landscape of opinions. On one side, there were staunch supporters who continued to practice power, posing, and swear by its benefits. On the other, skeptics and critics who viewed it as a cautionary tale of overhyped science and media sensationalism. Despite the scientific controversy, many individuals reported positive personal experiences with power posing. Stories emerged of people who felt more confident and assertive after practicing the poses, attributing job interview successes and personal victories to this simple technique. These anecdotal accounts, while not scientifically rigorous, added a human dimension to the debate. They highlighted the potential placebo effect and the power of belief in self-improvement practices. Whether or not power posing could be scientifically validated, it undeniably resonated with many on a psychological and emotional level, providing a sense of empowerment in challenging situations. In the broader context of psychological theory, power posing intersects with long-standing ideas about the mind-body connection. The concept that our physical posture can influence our mental state is rooted in embodied cognition, a theory suggesting that our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are deeply intertwined with our bodily sensations and actions. Power posing tapped into this theory, proposing that by adopting expansive, dominant postures, we could trick our minds into feeling more powerful. While the physiological evidence remains contentious, the psychological perspective maintains that how we carry our bodies does affect how we feel and act. The power posing saga also highlights a significant issue in modern psychology, the replication crisis. This crisis refers to the growing realization that many psychological studies once taken as fact fail to replicate when the experiments are repeated. Power posing became a poster child for this crisis, illustrating the challenges researchers face in producing reliable, reproducible results. The scrutiny and debate surrounding power posing 
have prompted the scientific community to advocate for more rigorous research methodologies, greater transparency, and the importance of replication in establishing scientific truths. Ethically, the controversy over power posing raises questions about the responsibility of scientists and media in disseminating research findings. The initial enthusiasm for power posing was fueled by compelling narratives and widespread media coverage, which often glossed over the nuances and limitations of the research. As the backlash grew, it became clear that both researchers and journalists need to approach scientific communication with caution ensuring that the public receives a balanced view. The ethical imperative to avoid overstating findings is crucial in maintaining public trust in science and preventing the spread of potentially misleading information. Reflecting on the power posing journey, we are reminded of the complex interplay between science, belief, and self-improvement. The story of power posing is not just about a scientific hypothesis, but about the hopes and aspirations of individuals seeking tools for personal growth. It underscores the importance of critical thinking and the need to balance optimism with skepticism. While power posing may not deliver the physiological miracles once promised, its psychological impact and the broader lessons it imparts about body language and confidence remain valuable. As we conclude this exploration of power posing, it's clear that the technique sits at the crossroads of science and self-help, embodying both the potential and pitfalls of psychological research. Whether you view power posing as a powerful tool for personal empowerment or a cautionary tale of scientific overreach, its journey offers profound insights into human nature, belief, and the quest for self-improvement. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into one of the most intriguing and contentious topics in modern psychology. Until next time, stay curious and never stop questioning.